How's it going? How's it going? Welcome to Changing Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Happy uh, Thursday to everyone. We got an awesome show planned uh, for you guys tonight. Tonight we'll be discussing, or asking the question rather, why not you? Why not you? Uh, before we get started, everything, I want to, you know, give a greeting to my awesome producer, DJ Lab. What's going on, bro? You have a good turkey day? Yeah, yeah, had an awesome uh, turkey day, man. Good, good, You know, good. and everything. Also to the co-producer, <laughs> Slick360. 316. Yes, right. I'd be about to say 365. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. Also, say what's up to my assistant, Joni, and everything. Joni's doing pretty good and everything. Uh, spoke to her the other day. She says, you know, she's well on the road to recovery and everything. But uh, tonight's show, again, we're asking the question, why not you? And what I had, what I was thinking about it, I think there's a lot of people out here right now that are always, you know, doing jobs and doing certain things where they're working they're like man you know my dang supervisor don't know nothing you know mm-hmm. you know i'm dealing with you know you know they got the, uh, the football coach he don't know nothing but got my child doing this and you know other opportunities they have in life they're always bringing up where other people don't have it so then you ask that you know easy question well, well hey, why ain't you doing it right. uh 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 uh, uh. <laughs> the damn dial tone <laughs> coming on in and stuff so that's what I want to discuss and everything. I think we're going to have a great show, you know, in regards to discussing that issue, why not you? Uh, as always, what we want to do is rehash the previous week. Uh, again, you know, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. Hope everybody enjoyed itself, had a safe and uh, pleasant Thanksgiving holiday. Hope you didn't get too fat. And if you did get fat, hope you got jolly with it. So um, I enjoyed myself. Who's up my mom's house? Had a good time. The kids weren't there and everything. I was just telling the lab that was kind of awkward. But, you know, it was cool. It was cool and everything and stuff. And the unique part about it, my kids didn't call the damn check on me. Really? Oh, yeah, man. They're down to <laughs> Gusta, man, and no rule land. I ain't said damn. No rule land. And no rule land and stuff. So they was just down there having a good time. But I was very, very glad when they came back, and they was happy to see me when they came back and right. everything. So that was cool and everything. Um, also remind everybody the Mr. Short Dollar YouTube page was launched December 1st. It was pretty cool. I think I'm at about seven or eight subscribers really yeah 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 i'm really excited about it man and you know like i was saying with that i'm just doing straight financial videos okay i haven't got a facebook page together for it and everything but i'm super excited uh, uh about it and everything because what we just want to kind of detach a lot of the financial and business stuff out of changing lives and focus more on that with mr short Lala and use some of the more you know personal growth issues and, and things like that Parent and family and stuff like that just were changing lives. And I think we were kind of, you know, diluting both, trying to okay. put everything on that one page. So I'm super excited about that. So if you haven't, go to Mr. Google Miss or, or Google Mr. Short Dollar or put Mr. Short Dollar in your YouTube page and it'll pop right up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also tell as many people you want to uh, subscribe also. Um, with that said, I also launch, if you haven't, my. Uh, Hey, a little bit. Let me see my sister chiming in. I also launched the uh, Madame Burden uh, clothing line for Christmas. What, what, you know, what, what, what's it called? Madame Burden. <laughs> That's French. What the, what's that, that French for? Miss Burden. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went deep in the lab for that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you went so deep with that one. Hey, so if you've seen... Uh, I've I've been promoting mostly through the Change Live Facebook page and done a lot of promos online. Uh, so you've probably seen some of the ads that I've been running. I got uh, uh, Christmas sweaters, sweatshirts, ladies. I got the leggings. I got everything you need. Uh, got designs with the family. Uh, it's, it's 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 more directed towards females. Okay. You know, and everything. Uh, real show up stuff, man, and everything. So we push those out. Sold a couple of items, you know, on Black Friday mm. and everything and stuff. Mm. So uh, I'm really getting new, uh, not new, but more heavily involved with the apparel okay. and everything like that. So I think 2020 is going to be real successful. But with that said, and I'm going to do some more promos, but definitely go by the Madame Burden. You can go by the uh, Change Live uh, uh, Facebook page. You can also put in Madame Burden, but B-E-R-D-E-N. Madame, you know, for you guys that, you know, aren't uh, maybe phonetically challenged, is M-A-D-A-M-E. And again, that's Burden, B-E-D-E-N. B, I'm sorry, B-E-R-D-E-N. So I'm hurting my own self. 
But if you can put that into uh, uh, Google that, it'll come up also. Really? So it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about everything. Uh, I got some real, real, real nice designs and stuff like that. Your sister will like it. And if you make your orders now, you'll still get everything before Christmas. Well, let me ask you a question. So sure, talk to me. So does it say Madame Burden on the shirt or something? No, no, no. I got one shirt with his real fine sister that been drawn out. Uh, uh, well, one of them, uh, Meet Me Under Mistletoe. Okay. And then I got another one, this Santa Claus uh, skirt she talking about, uh, Always Naughty and uh, Never Nice. Oh, okay. And then I got uh, one with a couple. And then I got one with uh, a family. Okay. You know, well, I think Nubian Nubian Christmas is a family of five or six. Uh-huh. And then uh, uh, some kind of. Was it, it wasn't love at Christmas with a couple okay. and everything. I've been pushing it back here. I haven't, uh, the ass, I've seen the ass on Instagram, but you know you can't run ass on Instagram like you do on Facebook and stuff. But I've pushed them out and everything. I've okay. seen someone pop up and everything. But, yeah, I man, that was a, a launch and everything. So it's been going pretty good. They ran it through Teespring, uh, pretty excited okay. and everything like that. So that, that was cool. I was uh, real excited about doing that. But, ladies, again, I got everything you need. I got the leggings. I got the the uh, the crop shirts, the 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 long sleeve shirts, the sweat shirts, anything you need, fellas, I got you too. Even with some of them things, if you want to wear sweater with a lady say naughty and nice, you know, do what you do. <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a different day and age, you know. <laughs> the price still the same. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. We say in the army, don't ask, don't tell. It's fine and everything. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I've had some challenges in regard to putting that tax class out and everything. We're still going to put something out <coughs> within the next week, but it won't be probably that whole course that I was planning. But I'm still going to put something out within the next week, so I'm going to do a heavy promo um, starting this weekend with getting that together and launching that and stuff like that. But I do apologize to everyone. I couldn't get the product out that I wanted to get out, uh, but I'm going to have something out that's going to be not necessarily – it's going to be a whole lot cheaper than what I wanted to put out and everything like that. But I'm going to put something out uh, and everything like that. But I know I've made some promises that I was going to do everything mid-November. We couldn't get that out, and I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do. Um, so, But I'm still putting something out. So be on the lookout with that. Um, my, I've been in this mastermind group, Great Pro Speakers, for the past, what, six months six months and everything uh-huh. real great uh mastermind course you know i think i told you about it we don't talk it's not like toastmasters or anything like that we talk about the business of speaking okay and that's helped me out a lot in regards to that whole business aspect and learning just those sales funnels getting your ebooks e-courses and all that kind of stuff because he, he what i what i looked at myself and i was so glad when i went you know when i went to phoenix for that one tax mastermind class our speaker there's older cat named summer's white he said something that kind of stuck with me and everything. Um, he said, don't don't go to damn Toastmasters. Just get out there and get you some uh, some reps. Mm. And I felt that same philosophy, but a lot of times I was kind of met with a little, you know, resistance with people right. like, yeah, you know. And I know when I speak, I, I, I got a gift for speaking. I never had a problem with speaking and stuff like that in front of crowds, but I know some of my phonetics and my diction and stuff might not be on point. But... I've always felt that the delivery and the message, you know, just like you go to one of those uh, down south churches. Right. And you don't have no half of the rev saying he get a, uh, uh, but, you know, he got everybody moving. <laughs> right, right. Everybody <laughs> moving. I don't know what the hell rev saying. He everything, uh, like, what is that? Uh, All right. Man, What's that do mean? Y'all, do you know what the hell I don't damn know? <laughs> That's amazing, man. Yeah. We in our damn that's forties. A, that's a feeling. We in our forties. <laughs> we don't even know what the hell. To, um, I never discovered what that meant. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't I, know if uh, you know the accent with the organ playing. But I, what is it? Um, <laughs> I need that one. <laughs> that is a that is a charge point. Damn. That is that is the point. That is called crowd participation moment. Crowd participation. Uh, and then the, somebody in the front row say, "Go ahead, Red. Okay. okay. Let them use you." I just always wanted that. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, what the hell? Is <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're going to burn up loud. But, you know, but just to that point, you know, just being able to capture your audience, you know, they, everything like that, I felt with that. So I've learned a lot, and that's going to end, I think, next week and stuff. I did start a new program next month. But I, I've learned a lot, and I've, you know, got a lot out of that course today ending. And uh, you know what it is, y'all? Month from now, it's going to start. Be crackling. Tax season 2020. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's when your boy get all the way live, you know? 
we get all the way live. And I got a lot of promos going right now. I'm going to be pushing a lot in the next couple of weeks. We got a whole new cash referral plan. We'll be getting like $50 cash referrals mm-hmm. to anything mm-hmm. you send. You don't even have to come to us for tax season. But if you send somebody to us, we'll be giving you $50 cash just for that referral. Mm-hmm. We also have, like what well, I was talking about uh, the other week about the uh, – the organization promotion, where if you are your organization, your fraternity, your church, your sorority, your mosque, or whatever, any other organization you got, if you send your people to me to us, we already had the promo codes. We'll give ten percent of the revenue back to your organization. Okay, you can't beat it. Mm-hmm. And I like to, you know, like I said, a lot of times people will say, um, people, uh, we already have a sister or brother in this church or the organization do taxes, but they ain't giving you ten percent of the revenue. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, we can you more than they tie money. So I mean, we, we, you know, let's let's go and get with it. So you guys again, we'll, we'll be pushing that and stuff like that. We can get we're doing it. We've been pushing out the letters and reaching out to people and stuff like that. But remember the fifty dollar cash referrals. We're doing the ten percent of revenue and everything. Um, this taxes, you know, I got everything you need. We have the um, starting January second. We'll be able to give those. Uh, uh, super advanced loans up to six thousand dollars. Cause tax season won't be electronically filed. I think to the end of January. Okay. So we we'll have okay. those products available up to six grand. So you know, if if you don't, you know, went broke after Christmas, more than likely, because we always know that the rent January is renting always going to be late. So if you need to get that <laughs> advanced right. loan, you know, starting January second, we'll be able to fund that for you up to six grand. Mm-hmm. Um, all the products we normally have will be available to you as well. So we look forward to seeing you guys this tax season. Okay, enough with that. We're hashing the week again. Tonight's show, we'll be asking, why not you? Again, this is Deontay Burton. It's our show, Change the Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, Change the Live, hosted by Deontay Burton. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to the Facebook channel. Subscribe to it. Make sure you look at all the over 100 videos we have on there. Like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you're pushing to all your family and friends about the show. So that guy's real smart, you know, and everything. And also go to the Mr. Short Dollar where we talk about finance, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. Uh, got a lot of stuff out there. Yep, yep, Pooch stays busy. Um, and we're asking the question, why not you? Uh, this kind of this question was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty important to me because I know, like I, I mentioned earlier, you know, you have a lot of people that go through life and they're always talking about w- that, you know, they have short. They have problems with certain people that they deal with. They're doing certain things that they had to interact with, in positions over them. Mm-hmm. My supervisor don't know shit. Man, if I man, if I did that, they only do this. He dumb. He dumb. Mm-hmm. And you always want to ask yourself, why the hell? Don't you? Do it? Yeah, don't you do it? Mm-hmm. And you know, well, I gotta do this. I gotta do that. You know, man, shit, man. I, I gotta make me some more damn mm-hmm. money, man. Mm-hmm. I gotta do this and that. Look, man, why don't you go into a little managerial program? Do that, man. That shit a year long. I ain't got time to be in no damn program for a year. But if you're going to be in the, at the same job this time next year, no. do it matter? Right. You know, and I think far too often people avoid uh, discomfort mm-hmm. to bring more comfort. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm, you, you know, you, ever, you had that, that, that co-worker, you just like, man, would you shut the hell up? you just walking here mad as hell. You know, just mm-hmm. Oscar. about nothing. Hell, there go, here go Oscar. He done got out his damn can. <laughs> 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 he got on the soapbox. Yeah, box. <laughs> a damn grouch. He just, rah, 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 oh, shit. And those people just seem like they're constantly <laughs> upset or uh, unhappy with life. And a lot of it got to do because things that, not has happened to them, just things they just haven't done. You um, know, I go back to my moment where I probably, in my life, because uh, I'm, you know, I'm a pretty self-driven person, and uh, I ain't always been like that. But you know, especially when I was like younger and, and everything. But I remember uh, my uh, probably my, my a turning point. You know, when I, when I was like, okay, why not me? I was uh, 20 years old, and I remember I was uh, stationed in Bamberg, Germany, and. Uh, uh, I was an older gentleman approached me about going through Masonic. You know, Masonic is you know it originated in uh, England, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's real big, real big overseas. It's nothing like military lodges aren't like civilian lodges here, but you okay. know it's way different overseas, especially when you're in Europe. Okay. So they approached me. So it's a it was, it was a different kind of a uh, Masonic over there is a little different. And not nothing is wrong over here, but it's a different, more esteem over there because you see a lot of. Uh, you didn't like here is kind of separated where you see the black lodges and the white lodges. Uh-huh. They're kind of interacted together, white and black lodges okay. in Europe. Okay. But is everybody kind of like of in steam, you know, just seeing people in Europe in there. So they approached me. I was twenty, and you've, and to be honest with you, most of the time, 
you may be late twenties, early thirties, but you know, I was just, you know, I was pooch, Mr. Hard Charger. Right. So they approached me. And uh, you know, I was just thinking about doing it and then, you know, you had your buddies like, Man, pooch, they gonna beat your ass and they gonna da you know, you gotta do this and you gotta do that. And I was just so damn nervous because you're supposed to be already looking at the guys of steam that was doing it right. and everything. So I was just kinda hesitant. And then what hit me was I kinda seen I don't like talking about nobody because these my brothers. Uh my man Sam and a Sergeant Jones. They were really damn imbeciles. And <laughs> so you sit there like <laughs> shit. Right. He went through it. Right. I know damn, damn. well, you know. <laughs> they wouldn't even have to damn man. I was. They like and they made me at thirties and I'm twenty and hell, they went through it. And I know if them fools could, you know. Right. right. It can't be anything that I can't do. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that I challenged myself like that mm-hmm. with, with doing it. But that was a, a, a clear point in my life that uh, I was really, you know, just like, you know, you try to talk yourself out of some stuff uh-huh. and everything. But that was, the, that was that first, you know, you know, why not me? Right. With, with doing it, man. And I went through and everything that young, whatever, December 27th, uh, 90. 90, what, 97? December 27, yeah, December, December 27, 97. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I went through and everything, but I just remember just that whole hesitation till I started looking at the cats in there like, hell, <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? It's got to be. Yeah. It's, and, and, and it's got to be easy. <laughs> well, you know, you know it's not, it's not the issue of it being easy, but you know it's not impossible if they did it, okay. yeah, that's that's why I looked at it like, you know, if they can go through it, I know I can. Right. I ain't talking about nobody. I just got that kind of confidence in myself, and I, ain't, you know, I ain't even set myself short. Right. And to that point, how often do we see people in in, in, in certain positions? Mm-hmm. Well, we just like, man, how in the hell he do this? Why in the hell? And we speak, we put so much emphasis on complaining about another person you say complaining you say hating whatever you want to look at it right. and not necessarily challenging ourselves with that same energy to do that that's true you know and and you know uh, you can look at it just right now what, what, the uh, most powerful person in the country how the hell trump get it how the hell you know right. you know he ain't know nothing this that and that but if you stop for a second he just did it mm-hmm. and the reason why he in that position is what he said how the hell they got elected right. and he ran Right. So it's just kind of like just just that thought process of it. Sometimes it comes down as simple <laughs> as you just deciding to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and far too often people focus so much on what they haven't got and what they haven't done instead of focusing on what they can do. And I think that was, you know, my um, what the thought process that started me with, with doing tonight's show. Why not you to kind of have people really. Look deep in themselves and assess themselves and just say, look, you might have missed out on some opportunities or na- in the past, now, or even in the future by not really just uh, uh, pushing yourself, mm-hmm. you know, to do certain things. And, and that's really what I wanted to kind of touch on with tonight's show. Um, why not you? Okay. Again, this is Change the Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. We're streaming live on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Please make sure you interact with everything. Um, um, Make sure you also go to the YouTube channel, Change the Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Subscribe to the channel. We're growing and growing each year, each month, rather. So please continue with the support. Hey, how you doing? Um, and also, like, we, we, uh, we, we're, if you're interacting with the, the, any one of the chats and stuff like that, leave, feel free to leave your comments and everything because we're interacting with, uh, with anyone. So free, please feel free to uh, 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 share your comments with anything that we got going on tonight. Um, when you start asking yourself, why not you? What I looked at is the thing that I think that's holding up three people. I mean, not three people. Three things that are holding people up is three common barriers are uh, society mm-hmm. and your employment. Usually, the second being family and friends. The third being yourself. Like I can say again, those three things being society, maybe job. Second being family and friends, and the third being yourself. These are usually the barriers that kind of keep you from. Maybe excelling being the best you possible. Now, it may not necessarily be people doing anything intentionally. You may be looking at them and kind of just afraid to make a move, or they may be putting certain things in your head or pressuring you not to excel. So what I want to do is address those three things 
what I just discussed also give you some possible solutions to overcome those barriers, okay? When first we start talking about society and employment and things like that, um, I, I look back in terms of, you know, a lot of times, you know, do you have, when we say, r- racial barriers? Of course, you do have things in terms of, you know, you know, some injustices where people look at you funny with uh, your race. People can look at you or hold you back and I give you opportunities in terms of your uh, maybe social status mm-hmm. or even your education. Mm-hmm. Um, I think ed- I think a lot of times race and education are the most are, are two of the main reasons. The social status really, I get it, but they use they'll they'll use that education first, and then they'll throw that race in there mix to hold you back. No, you know I agree. Yeah. But you know, even even with the social status piece, the social status not necessarily that someone's holding you back. You might be holding yourself, yourself back. back. Right, you right. Might feel like, I ain't got enough money to run for that. Okay. You okay. know, I, I, ain't, I ain't really where I'm. I well, I feel like people. I'm at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I don't, what's the word you hear? I ain't where I want to be in life yet. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and be honest with you, you ain't going to never be there. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? You ain't going to never be there. This might help you get there. Yeah, yeah. A well, little bit, a little closer. And what I'm going to tell you, the reason why I say you'll never be there is more so because you're putting a mental block on yourself. You can be, that place where you feel like you're in, in, in life where you want to be at, mm-hmm. you'll never get there because even as you progress in 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 life, you still put something else on top of it. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, if you're comfortable with yourself, you don't matter. Those it's just whatever circumstance you're in, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. If you're making <clears throat> twenty thousand dollars a year, you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You're still the same person. Okay. Now, if you can't afford to do something, you just can't afford to do something. But if you're holding yourself back because you haven't uh, achieved certain things, that's just you. Okay. Now. If people are sitting there putting in those barriers saying, okay, well, look, he's not one of us. You know, we're the elites. And they're just a peon. You can't help that. Right. But those are things in terms of, you know, where people can see and lay certain things. And you have to be the one if you're going to buy into it or not. So these barriers we are talking about more are more internal instead of external barriers. Not really. They're, they're, they're both. Okay. They're, okay. they're, they're both. Because what we're talking about now, the barriers we're talking about, because – you know, when we say society and employment, it can be how folk perceive you and how you perceive yourself with dealing with those people. Okay. You know, you, you know what I mean? So right. we're looking at it in terms of those three things, the society, employment, family, friends, and yourself. It can all, it can be either or. Okay. You know, and everything. And, you know, it's a good question. And that's why I want to kind of touch on uh, that in external side and the internal side of it. Whereas, you know, people can... <clears throat> make things challenging for you to progress in life or just say even your, your boss, if he doesn't want to promote you or whatever. I remember when I was working at uh, uh, the railroad. No, I say Norfolk Southern because they know they did some wrong sh- to me. Uh, Sounds familiar. Tell you what I was told, I man. worked there, too. Tell my, su- my supervisor told me. And uh, I remember she asked that, but Deontay, do you know, uh, I said, you know, I, I went in the office. I said, you know, when are we going to talk about, you know, this promotion? Yeah. She said, promotion? I said, yeah, promotion. You know, I, I interviewed, right? She said, why do you think you, you, you should get it? You know, do you, and she, this is what she said to me. Boy, uh, because you know the system, you know the process better than anybody if we bring somebody in? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we look at other corporately things. I said, shit, you know, I ain't, I ain't Albert Einstein, but, you know, I ain't never heard of that word before. What the hell is corporately? Right. You know, <laughs> well, other things. Right. You know, sometimes white folks say certain things just right. get you out of the damn room. Right, think you right. ain't going to say like, corporately. okay, yeah, yes, or ma'am. Now, hell no. What the hell does corporately, corporately mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell me something. I'm about to turn to a little mad short man and get a jumping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that's the kind of stuff. Well, well, other things, Deontay, they, you know, they get nervous and they feel yeah. threatened. They be about to press the button and get you. Right, get you out of yeah. office. Yeah, yeah. But that's the kind of thing in terms of just no matter what it is, what you do, they weren't going to give me an opportunity. Right. You know, and everything. That's kind of even like the last. My last was spat in corporate America. You know, you got all your masters and everything like that. If, you know, you have people, no matter what it is, you do what you're supposed to do. They can't do it. You know, you don't have no negative performance reports or anything like that. But for whatever it is, people just not getting the opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why we're talking about those you know, societal and employment barriers. You know, and they are there. You just have to decide how you're going to handle them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Excuse me. The next one we're going to talk about family and friends. This is a soft spot right here because typically as we go through life, we put a lot of weight on the interaction and perception that we have with family and friends. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, even the most confident person, y- y- you still need that 
man, that's a good job. That's a good idea. Yeah, you ought to try this. You ought to try that. And you may have somebody that's very close to you or, or very, a, a major confidant. You could be a sibling or, or a good friend or whatever. And they can say something to just throw your ass totally off. Mm-hmm. Not that they trying to hate sometimes. Sometimes they just putting their damn feels on you. Right. And can throw your ass totally off. And uh, sometimes it may be out of honesty. <clears throat> where they say, you know, you say, well, look, I want to go and take this new task. I'm like, well, look, lab, you know, you want to do this new job, and they start in the morning. You know, you're already sleeping late. You know, you be, <laughs> you used to sleep, you know, and mood. everything. Yeah. So you know, you know, and uh, they, you know, they just saying certain things that are facts, mm-hmm. and you might not necessarily like that they're giving you facts at that particular point in time. Right. Um, they may be putting stuff in there as far as they can't see you doing that mm-hmm. and everything. Supervisor. You know, I, I remember almost 20 years ago when I started the tag business, I remember a close friend of mine say, oh, boy, niggas are always trying to make some money. Oh, God damn. It's you know, <laughs> <laughs> niggas are always trying to make some money. That was, a, that, was yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was that. You know, but, <laughs> hey, I ain't really thinking that's nothing. They're just shooting that off the heads and stuff. And you just like, man, dang, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And you and you share stuff with people, and people just kind of just like, woo. And you got someone that's just straight hate. Okay. Straight hate. I've had family members call me arrogant, conceited, and all kind of stuff and everything. You're like, where the hell that come from? <laughs> <laughs> I want none of that. I have a pen in my pocket. Right. You know, arrogant. <laughs> now I got a little chance. Yeah, yeah. You got <laughs> arrogant, conceited. Come on now. <laughs> you know, but again, those are the kind of things that with people that are close to you where you really expect to get the most love and support say certain things you're like ah no and those those barriers that can kind of stop you from even just challenging yourself and moving forward in certain situations Mm -hmm. and it's uh it's very unfortunate not that you need people that close to you to agree or 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 or, or, or move on everything you say but you just want them to be as genuine as possible now again sometimes when that genuine come around it may not be what you want to hear but you know that depending on how you receive it, you can receive it. You know, just being uh, unbiased to yourself, mm-hmm. or in, in terms of hey, I'm just gonna take this criticism, or you can just take it like woo, you know, and everything. I'm some stuff like, you know, you know, it's just hate. Mm-hmm. So those kind of things that you know can shift a lot of stuff off, depending on how you know it's given with those people. Because again, those family and friends, we we put a lot more weight on them because. Typically, society employments don't really know you. Your family and friends know you. You mm-hmm. share secrets with them. They see other things that they can call you out on instead of correcting you. Now they're saying certain things why you shouldn't do it, and it's taken. You can take it all kind of ways. Right. And like I said, those causes those barriers. But like I said, be be it uh, just or unjust criticism. Right. You know, again, we just right now we're just acknowledging barriers. Uh, to keep people from moving, you know, moving forward. Again, tonight's show we're talking about why not you, and we're addressing the three main barriers, that being employment society, family, friends, and now we're going to get to the third point, which is you. The, the thing of what you is, when you look at yourself, a lot of us really, you know, we, 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 me and you talk about a lot of this on the show, those self-assessments. Right. And self-assessments are very hard because self-assessment can be very painful, you know, because a lot of times, we uh we don't want to address certain things because now we got to be honest with ourselves, you know, why we didn't go for that supervised position. And we know us better than anybody know us. Absolutely, absolutely, exactly. yeah, absolutely. And you know that could be, you know, shit. We comfortable, mm-hmm. man. Shit, I've been in this job twenty years, man. Shit, I got about five years before I retire, man. I ain't got time to be trying to, you know, do that. And then you know, go for that promotion. And then you, forty five, and then they put. This damn twenty five year old supervisor, oh, a yeah. young boy, think he know shit. He ain't never been over, you know. But <laughs> How you many times that happened? Exactly. Right. You know, and everything. You've been at the job twenty years, and they say, look, for you to get a management position, you need to get at least an associate's degree. So as time go by, you never do it, and then they come in with this kid that got it. Oh man, he just need a degree, and they always told you to do that. Right. And that was just a a, a, a thing that you put on yourself because you got you know comfortable. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to take the initiative to do it and everything. Um, what I, I call it uh, intentional ignorance. Okay. And I think a lot of times people will say they didn't know or weren't aware of certain things. That way they ain't got to be accountable. 
And a lot of times I've seen that, you know, in terms of people that I've dealt with professionally and personally, family members and stuff like that, they'll always say I didn't know or don't try to do certain things so they can always, in, in, in their mind, say they're not, you know, they didn't know and not be held accountable. And that's probably one of the first things you learn in the military. And I tell you, uh, there's no excuse for ignorance. Okay. So, especially this day and age, because <clears throat> prior, prior to, I would say, let's say 2010, you didn't have no Google. So, again, you always have to, you know, dig up information. Right, right. now, you really don't have no, no excuse for you not to know anything. Right. Because as long as you got Google, uh, Google and YouTube University, you can pull up anything. Anything. And so when people try to say, well, look, I didn't know, or oh, that's all you had to do, or oh, man, I ain't, shit, whatever. Right. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. You ain't had no attention to doing anything. Hell no, because you have no excuse not to do it. Right. And so we put a lot of those barriers on ourselves so we can kind of, you know, make it seem like we didn't know, or uh, somebody kept stuff from us, or they don't tell you this, that, and that. A lot of times people don't have to tell you. Even mm-hmm. company public policies and stuff like that, they'll you can find certain information out. Now again, you got the human aspect. If somebody's gonna give you opportunity or they're gonna lie to you and don't give you opportunity, they may let or interview other people and just give you some BS. That's fair enough. But you're not taking the initiative to even get turned down, that's a whole different dynamic. Okay. And that's why I say a lot of times that's what we were talking about the the barriers that you can cause for yourself. Okay. You know, and that's and that's very tough because a lot of times uh, people really, really put themselves in a funny spot because even when you start going and just say when that, those situations happen to that point where somebody's younger than you in charge of you, then you're going to have to get asked that question, well, why the hell you been here 20 years and you ain't try to uh, get a promotion? Right. Or why the hell you been here all this time and you ain't never try to go to the management program and you complain about this young boy? Mm-hmm. Now you got to get asked that painful question. Yeah, and he's then been you been here twenty five years. Yeah, and then you you turn around. He's twenty five well, years old. Exactly. <laughs> so when they turn around and ask you, well, hell, why are you complaining about him? You should have did it. Now, 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 now we got some painful stuff coming yeah, in. Right, right. Now we got to think about why. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you already thought about it, but you just like I said again, that self assessment. Mm-hmm. People don't want to see him be real with themselves, and um, those are pretty much the three main barriers to kind of keep you from being the best you possible, keep you from success. Those being again. Society and employment, third one being family and friends. I mean, second one being family and friends, and third one being you yourself that it can cause barriers to kind of hinder you from, you know, developing or being successful in life. Mm-hmm. Um, next, I want to go over, I got three ways that you can get past those barriers. Uh, before I give them out, again, I want to just say, again, this is Change Your Life, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. We're streaming live on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, the YouTube being the main vessel that we push everything out. We got over 100 videos set on the YouTube channel. So make sure you go to the YouTube channel, check out the videos. Subscribe, 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 share, share, share. Leave as much comments, interaction you can as possible um, because we need all the growth we can. And also, go check out the Mr. Short Dollar new YouTube channel. I'm right at eight subscribers. By this time next week, I need to be at 300. And I <laughs> <laughs> So any help I can get, you know, just right. help me out with that. So you can also just hit Mr. Short Dollar on, on the YouTube and stuff like that, and I appreciate that. Are, are the videos on Mr. Short Dollar shorter? They're shorter videos, right? Yeah, they're all short videos. Okay, they're all okay. like, you know, under 10 minutes. Okay. Now I'm okay. going to have some probably maybe about around that little things. I might just go over, say uh, I'm doing a video about the five things needed to get a business loan. Okay. So that's going to be a little bit longer. And I, but that's still maybe a 10 to 15-minute video. Okay. Okay. Uh, the two or three things you need to do, you know, uh, or the five, uh, two or three things you need to do to get a certain business started, the different parts of a business plan. Okay. So that they may be a little, some of them may, but most of them are just kind of like anywhere from, from three to ten minutes long okay. and everything. It won't be a, a, a straight out show, but it's going to be strictly personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. Okay. Straight with that and everything, you know. be Maybe some personal development from professional side. Mm-hmm. But we're we're pulling most of that stuff out of the changing lives and stuff like that. And if if it's a a subject that can kind of affect both of them, we'll list both of them on both channels. But make sure you go check that out, Mister Short Dollar, under YouTube. <laughs> now, the moment of truth. What we're gonna go over now is the three ways that uh you can get past those barriers. Okay. Okay. We just went over. The three main barriers that can keep you from being successful. Now we're going to go get the three ways to top of that. 
you know, again, you know, because <clears throat> with addressing some of the, the those barriers that we talked about, you need some tools or things in place from a personal perspective to help you overcome that. Okay, mm-hmm. so I hope these three here help you. Number one thing, you need to prepare. Uh, when I say prepare, you need to make sure that you're ready for any kind of situation possible. Okay. You know, you need to make sure that any kind of uh, uh, opportunity that you got, uh, you have to make sure that, you know, you've trained for it, study for it, you know, find all the information you can to do it. Okay. A lot of times, lack of information kind of keep us inactive. And when you become inactive, that's when you just miss opportunities. When you miss opportunities, that's when you just get left out, become bitter, and all other kind of stuff happen. Right. So when you prepare, you ready to just get it done. You ready to get started. Man, look, man, I done studied. I know that damn test is next Wednesday. I wish, hell, I wish I can't wait for next Wednesday to come. Right. But when you know you ain't prepared, it's damn midnight <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Shit, man, can I? Can I reach it? Can I, can I, can I, uh, I, wonder, can I postpone, it? reschedule that test right. and everything like that? You don't want to be like that. Right. Because that's the thing about it is uh, you don't know when that time going to come back around. Mm-hmm. So prepare, prepare, prepare. Don't, if you prepare for something, there is no barrier for you because you're just ready, you know what I'm saying, just to get, let, let's get it started. Let's get it, you know, right, right. I'm, I'm ready. Right. I done sat here and did everything. Hey, just like how everybody was uh, last Wednesday night. Okay. You got your chitlins, you got your greens, you got everything, you <laughs> stuff like that. I'm Step ready. And look Woo! at <laughs> Let's get it started. Thanksgiving. You know, come on over. Yeah, y'all heard? Y'all coming? Yeah. Come on over. Y'all ready to get it cracking. Because right. y'all got it together. It's prepared. It's let, your, let your ass be trying to cook all that turkey out around by 8 or 9 o'clock that morning. You're like, damn. <laughs> oh, shit. Now you starting to fire, dropping that frozen turkey in the fryer. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't prepared. Damn, something wrong with these damn chitlins. <laughs> they ain't seasoned right. Your damn greens off. You ain't prepared. You got to be prepared. <laughs> you know, who, who can't have any barriers and stuff like that. So prepare, 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 and everything. The second thing is uh, uh, believe in yourself. A lot of times, you know, again, we start talking about uh, uh, self doubt and everything. You know, if you if you don't believe in yourself and and, and and trust your abilities of what you can do, you'll never be able to try to take on new endeavors. Mm. A lot of times people don't understand when a lot of things we do because we, I think, I'm sorry, things that we don't do is because we don't necessarily feel we're totally capable of doing it. And sometimes right. you'd be lucky enough, fortunate enough rather, to get people in your life to kind of push you. Man, lab going to try it out. Put you mm. going to do that and everything. But most of the time we kind of stuck out there. And you have to really just put yourself in a position where you just, well, a mindset to be like, shit, I got this. Right. I got this. You know what I'm saying? Go back to what I was saying about Sammy and Sergeant Jones. Man, shit, they did it. <laughs> I know I did. Man, Sergeant Jones so damn ate up, man. He was a good <laughs> dude, man. But, I mean, he's just one of them cats might have his shoe on, foot on the wrong shoe. It was military. <laughs> the fuck he doing, man? He's got, he's got his shoes on the wrong foot. Yeah. A leader of men in <laughs> warfare. <laughs> Shit, that's <laughs> effed up. And you sitting there like, hell, if he went through it, right. I know I can't. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, you know, hey, look, man, <laughs> I know if he did. You know, I know it might be difficult. I know it might be tough. But, you know, where in the hell, if, you know, they tried, you know, uh, uh, I, I can't do it. So just believing in yourself. Not necessarily the belief or had that, you know, like I told you before, I've had people close to me, you know, saying it. And, and it, it do make you feel some type of way when people say, Poochie, you conceited. Poochie, you arrogant and all that kind of stuff. But I ain't, shit, no, I ain't like that. Right. I just believe in Poochie. Right. Poochie ain't never let me down. <laughs> shit, the other folks have. Right, right. Poochie ain't never let me down. Poochie always. Poochie be. gonna go 24-7. Right. 365 to get what Poochie need to do. Okay. The other damn folks ain't gonna do my grind. Right. So Poochie ain't never let me down. Poochie got me here. I've had a lot of support and all that kind of stuff. Right. But, you know, all that... Yeah, you could, man, like I said, I've heard, and you'd be like, huh? You know, and everything, right. and, 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 and they can't tell you why. Because you just, you always feel like you can do this. You always feel like you can do that. <laughs> why not? Ah, damn, man, you know, I mean, would you rather have me on Dr. Phil? You know, just, <laughs> I 
me that? Well, do you really want me on somebody's couch? Right. Talking about, you know, I don't believe myself. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sad and shit. I mean, what do you want? <laughs> you have to move past the, you have to move, you have to uh, be assured in your abilities, but your abilities may uh, surprise you. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You may be surprised by how able you are to, to complete or start or whatever, something. It, it's kind of like what we always tell the kids in track. You, you never know what's going to happen if you keep running. Mm-hmm. But once you stop, you know what's happening. Right. Now, how many times you look at some of the races and stuff like that with a person waving their hands right for the finish line, the damn food right behind <laughs> them, get them there. What the hell? You just don't know. Right. As long as you keep going and keep going and you believe in yourself, man, come on now. And you feel so good about yourself when you don't quit that, like, man, man, it's just it's something about – when you make an accomplishment in life and you know you put a lot of effort in it, mm-hmm. it's something about how you just feel about yourself. Right, Nobody right. can take that away from you. You did that. Mm-hmm. You did that. You finished that. I started this business. Even if it don't work, you know you, you did, did it, you know. And how many damn folks ain't never did it and just, you know, like I say, Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> you know, that jazz back in that damn can. You know, just, <laughs> and that's one of the things you just got to, you know, make sure you uh, believe in yourself. And um, this third one, this is super, super important because <clears throat> I think far too often we got people that have lived a long life, and this is probably something that hunts a lot of them. Your fear of not trying has to be greater than your fear of failing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, again, your fear of not trying got to be greater than your fear of not failing. And, um, you know, you hear in b-ball time, got to shoot your shot because you don't know when that damn ball going to come back around. Right. Especially you got a damn ball hawk on your team. <laughs> it's MF. Shit, I'm open. I'm shit, this shit. <laughs> shit. You have yeah. court. I mean, yeah. Damn. You don't know Coke going to take your ass out of the game, put you back in. Better shoot that shot. I know, right? That fine girl walking out of the hall better say something to her. <laughs> I told you, but I told her that damn. I learned that early, you man. She, that early. She, she like, walking out of the hall with McGill Gorilla, like, what the hell? Holy shit. Man, you know, like I can say, it tell you, well, Poochie, you didn't say nothing to me. That never happened oh, again. Yeah. <laughs> mm It never happened again. And uh, you know, even just you know, losing my cousin uh, the other week, you know, life ain't promised to you. So yeah. you don't know if opportunities are ever gonna come back to you, uh, in life. And I think far too often we hear people, you know, what we were just talking mm-hmm. about earlier, people say, Okay, well I'm just doing next year when I get myself together and mm-hmm. everything and that time will never come. And <clears throat> We put stuff off uh, because more so that fear of even trying to do mm-hmm. it. You hear it all the time, you know, well, you know, next year, you know, this time last year, we were just doing a show right. talking about the goal setting and getting them objectives and all that kind of stuff. 2018, what you going to do in 2019? Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my business. I'm going to get this there. I'm going to get my credit straight. Get my money. Da, 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 da. Everybody got different stuff. And it's one thing you tried. You tried and work out. Shit, you can live with that. Right. But how many folks didn't even try? Yeah, that's you know it. what I'm saying? They got we, a. We talked about that today at work. Me and my mm-hmm. supervisor. Well, mm-hmm. he not. He, yeah, he. My, well, I'm gonna call my supervisor. He been there mm-hmm. for thirty years. We talked about it, and we he was he was, you know he was saying about my birthday. He was like, you know, happy you know happy belated birthday and everything. He's real cool, nice cat. He said that you know happy belated birthday. He said, do you know I've been here twenty five years, but within that span of twenty years, I don't remember where it's, where it went. <laughs> I don't remember the twenty years of where it went because mm-hmm. when I started here, I was forty. He said, now I'm 61. He said, I don't know where that 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 20 years went. He said, you know, you just turned your age. I'm not going to say my age. I'm, I'm funny. I'm, you just turned 49. Uh-huh. And we was talking. He said, I said, yeah, and I've no already ass- I already assessed that like a couple of days ago. I said, I assessed that. Typically, I have 25 good summers left, mm. which is basically 25 good summers left where I am able to pay maybe do some things be mobile and that because after the 25th year you may have 31 years but are you going to be mobile got you you get what i'm saying are you going to be able to see are you going to be able to hear are got you your faculties and are your time. faculties going to be so technically i have 25 good summers left got you so what am i going to do within those 25 good summers mm-hmm. in order to make my life feel like i'm fulfilled <coughs> got you and when you take it in perspective like that 25 summers is not very many got you it's not you know what i'm saying it's gotcha. people are like oh i'm, I'm I, I, I'm gonna live till I'm 80, but it's, that's technically only 25 something. Yeah, a it, different it, sense of urgency. It does. Mm-hmm. And when I sat down and thought about that, it just really, I thought 50 was gonna hit me hard. 49 is hitting me harder than I thought because of the fact that I'm assessing how many summers I have left. 
And tomorrow is never promised. Absolutely. It's never promised. Absolutely. It's just like, I was thinking, I, we was talking about somebody and how they passed away or something, but this is more to do with what we're saying, that you can't wait until tomorrow. You have to go ahead and do it today. When it comes to your happiness, when it comes to your business, when it comes to whatever you're trying to accomplish within life, tomorrow's never promised. And if everybody sat back and looked at themselves and said to themselves how many summers they had left, they might get moving a little bit faster. Yeah. Because you, you can't look at it like 80, I'm going to be 80 years old. You got to look at it in terms of summers or winters because those how, that's how the cycle rolls. Yeah. You yeah. know, it opens your eyes to a lot of things. I'm like, damn, 25 summers, that's not a lot. A lot. That's not a lot. What, what was that movie? Well, when you see that movie, what was that Morgan Freeman and some other guy? They did the bucket list, mm -hmm. and they both of them know they got diagnosed with terminal diseases, and they was just like, shit, they just trying to do all this stuff yeah, right. that they had been putting off all those years and stuff like that. And that's the thing, man. Again, you know, once it's kind of put in your face, like, look, this time you think you got your ass ain't got, right. you, you have a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to see a person that's older and that look. And they said, man, I wish I had a took more risk. I wish I had a did this. I wish I had a left her ass alone. I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> that was my granddad. He said it about my grandma all the time. They end up bearing each other. <laughs> yeah. I heard that shit the whole time growing up. Where did them kids get grown? I'm going to move. They buried each other. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, really and truly just, really just taking those opportunities and everything, you know, uh, just trying and everything. I, th I think this we, 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 we inhibit ourselves so much mm -hmm. and make barriers that we, we won't be able to do certain things because of money, uh, opportunities, experience, or whatever. And we just come down simple trying it. And I think it really comes down to one simple thing that, you know, you got to – I me personally, I'd rather have a life full of memories of uh, attempting and failing than, you know, just uh, – all these regrets and not even trying. Mm -hmm. And when you ain't even tried, you know, that shit eat at you. Mm -hmm. It eat at you. It eat at you. And I'm sure it eats you at 49, that stuff you didn't do when you were 20, son, exactly. or 30, son. Exactly. You're sitting there like, shit, man, I had a damn if I had to did this. You know, and, and, and you don't dwell on it too much because, again, you know, we are where we had in life, and we, we we glad, you know, we by the good or bad decision we made, you know, we still hanging. But we all kind of look back at, man, I should have damn bought that. I should have bought that, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. Man, I've been this opportunity that came by and shit done flourished. Man, I wish I should have did it. No, right. flip side, I had some shit that done effed up like, woo -hoo. <laughs> Glad I did I put a post on Facebook today, man. Uh, me and my buddy, we had our uh, studio. Okay. I, uh, you check it out, you get a chance okay. on, on my Facebook. Uh, them throwback Thursday. <laughs> I had a picture of our studio. Uh, right at the White House, cross street from Turner Field. Okay. Back in shit, oh eight, oh nine. Uh huh. Man, like I told you, brother, I'm always got a pile of money and set that shit on fire. <laughs> when I say I burn, I ain't had no damn business in the music business. <laughs> you gotta <fight>. <laughs> <laughs> you threw all that shit away. Man, I just shit. That's all I should have did. Just burned up. But like I put on that post, what I did learn: stay in your lane. <laughs> No business. Man, I'm talking about, I ain't had no, I mean, that's just exactly what I did. I just, like, I just put a pile of money and set that shit on fire. Ain't nothing come out of that, man. Nothing. But nothing. you know it now. Yo, man, I know. It was a learning experience. Oh, stay in your lane. Yeah, yeah. Stay yeah. in your lane. But when you start, you're like, man, we about to get this oh, studio. shit, man, yeah. I thought I was going to be a little five foot six shoe at night. I just, <laughs> shit, man. I knew it. I knew it. Oh man, <laughs> shit! You gonna tell me now? Everybody had an entertainment <laughs> over the corner. It was mine was Pooch Entertainment. We, you know, we was just man, and you know, we had me and my boy, man. You know, we we this is still one of this one of my childhood friends. We still do business together. We can laugh at this shit now, man. But we almost lost our friendship right behind it. Cause that's some bullshit. Because I mean, that's some. Boy, I'm sorry, I'm cursing. I'm just thinking <laughs> back about how that was, boy. Like man, you know, you go in there and it just that wasn't nothing we have any business of doing right and everything but to that point what i'm getting at i tried right i tried and everything that's been i've had probably a lot more failures than i've had successes and that was probably one of those failures where i excuse me i should have got off the boat a whole lot earlier mm -hmm. than i did and everything mm -hmm. trying to hold on and everything but i tell you man that was uh 
that was a uh, experience. Like I said, we were at the studio right at the White House on the Vimbi Family. Your your ATL here is right across the street from Turner Field, right there in the back. <laughs> Soul Works Entertainment. Soul Works. Soul Works. <laughs> that shit should have been no work. <laughs> no work. I go in my studio at nighttime, man. It be about twenty dudes smoking weed. Right. And who the hell are y'all? <laughs> Who the hell are y'all? Is anybody rapping? Anybody man, making they in music? Them, they, in there, they might be screwing in my booth and all this other kind of oh stuff. Lord. My boy didn't sit here and make promises. It was just, my God. My my oldest one, 25 year old, we went down there one night. Just, man, let me pop up. Me booth says, that was wood. But me and him was riding. He's probably about, he, he would, I don't even know if he was like 9 or 10 years old. He's 25. And we just stopped there. Man, let me stop him. You know, the dad show your studio. Let you see it. Whoa. <laughs> Mistake. Man, <laughs> I'm talking about herbs. Soon as you park your car, and they asked me, "Hey," and they asked me, "Who are you?" <laughs> in my shit, shit. <laughs> in my shit. Ooh, stay in your lane. Stay right, in your lane. Right, right. But you learned from it. But I learned from and it. You tried. And I tried. And I tried. And I never, never, ever try again. Never <laughs> tried again. I tell you that. Sitting on this couch, going, man, I wish I would have tried that. Yeah. Yo, thing. All these producers now and. Yeah, shit. I remember. <laughs> I knew I was gonna be sure. <laughs> you should be the next dungeon fan. Man, <laughs> shit. They had my ass in the dungeon. One more month, man. I've been in the damn pole house. We want damn life. I've been trying to change in my damn life. <laughs> damn life. <laughs> oh boy, boy. I, bro, I lost a lot of goddamn. I see a lot of money behind that. You see, how I'm just reeling. Yeah, this shit over ten years ago, that. man. I'm sorry, sweating to think about it now. All that damn money out there lost behind it, you know, trying to be a music producer. <laughs> and you see, I don't know nothing. Now you be on them boys. You imagine how I was then. Walk around my suit. You don't blow up, blowing up money, man. But I learned a lot. But I tried again. So, again, that third one be, being, uh, hey, your fear of not trying again. Like I said, just don't, you don't want to have those life full of regrets of not trying and stuff. Just give it a shot. Give it a shot and everything. Because, like I said, again, we think next year next month or you know our next payday gonna come around or whatever you don't know that right so the stuff you can do today you got an opportunity just gonna take advantage of it okay if it don't work say it don't work but give it an honest try don't give it a piss poor try you know where you can put you know you put good effort in uh, uh good timing you know the proper amount of money or whatever the sacrifice you got put into it so you can say you gave it an honest effort but again those three things that uh, i want to give you guys you know to get past those barriers one being prepared make sure you fully have you know got yourself in a position to know what you're doing you've uh, uh embraced the situation you've been as knowledgeable as possible well put together as far as training experience you need to do just be prepared you know that way you can take on that situation without being nervous or feeling you know kind of hesitant about doing sec- uh, anything the second thing is believe in yourself if you don't believe in yourself nobody else here if you ain't totally sure you know what you can do no one else will and the key thing to being prepared uh being uh believing in yourself is being fully prepared you know, but again, you know, just don't don't lack no kind of confidence and stuff. Of course, you're. There's nothing wrong with being fearful, isn't it? But but fear is just you know that's just your alarm system to kind of make you you know stay on top of everything. But just believe in yourself, guys. And third, you know, fear not trying. Fear not trying more than you fear failing, because far too often people don't want to have egg on their face and trying to you know keep a certain front. But then they look back at me, I wish I had to try. And then what happened is you sitting in the room for other folks that you trying to save face for, and they saying the same shit. Man, I wish I had to do that. Well, damn, bro, I thought, I, I thought about getting a restaurant, too. I, yeah, you did, too. And all y'all damn fools worrying about what the other one going to say, you know, and, you, and none of you never did. did it together. Exactly. And now you're too damn old to even pick up a frying pan. Mm-hmm. Like Lab just said, you want to make sure you got, you got, but then, now you got three summers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's got three damn summers. Hey, yeah, you, you can't get out your damn pamper long enough to go do <laughs> <laughs> Talk about cooking. So, again, man, you know I'm being honest with that, man, but uh, just give it a try. So I, I hope we gave you guys some good information tonight. So ask yourself, why not you? And the reason why I want to bring this show up is because uh, uh, next week I'm going to have a guest in from the travel industry to talk about their business. And in the third show we're going to talk about, you know, rehash those uh, uh, goals we want to have for 2020 and kind of look back at some of the goals we set for 2019. But one of the key reasons why I want to do this show tonight, Why Not You, is because we're going into the new year, we're going into the new decade. People have put off so many stuff and not taking advantage of certain things they could have done in life or this past year saying the same thing. You know, again, we were talking the same stuff December 2018, what I want to do, what I'm going to do, and all that kind of stuff, and never, ever attempted greatness. 
and you see the people that have. And, and again, and it also shows the people that tried to do it but didn't give a full effort. You know, key thing when I went to that uh, mastermind class in Phoenix, when one guy told me, he said, you got a couple people that have been in this class before, but you actually can see the people that applied the principles that he taught us. Mm -hmm. Some people have been coming, but you see the ones – that, that have been do, yeah, the actual doing what he said doing. Right. So get that, you know, give it a give it a wholehearted <laughs> effort. We tried, man. Again, people look, why not you? Why you can't be the supervisor? Why you can't be calling the shots? Mm -hmm. If you feel like they so damn dumb or stupid or whatever or ignorant or whatever, well, why not you? Right. You know, why don't you can't why don't you be the one everybody calling dumb, stupid, and ignorant? <laughs> get, you know. <laughs> get a try, y'all. Get a try. Cause again, I I, I just want Everybody kind of, you know, get past that hump of, of creating those barriers a lot of times that you create for yourself. We brought about the ones inside, employing their family and friends, but I think most important, we make so many for ourselves that we don't really move forward with certain things. So, look, believe in yourselves, guys. Give it a try. And don't worry about failing or making mistakes. Uh, again, it's Deontay Burden, uh, a show of Change the Life, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Please make sure you go to that YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share the videos, share the videos, share the videos. I appreciate all the love and support you, uh, I've got from you guys so far. Please make sure you go to the Mr. Short Dollar uh, YouTube page, subscribe to it. Make sure you push it. we got a lot of good information coming out uh, next year. Thanks again for all the love and support. See you guys next week. Love you guys.